right. Hello, everyone. Oops, let's turn that off. There we go. Nope, let's turn that let's turn that off. There we go. Took a second. Welcome, archaeologists. It is Sunday night, and that means it's time for the weekly dig. For anyone new to the stream, this is a live show. We dig into anime old and new. I am Brent. These are my fabulous co-hosts, John. Konbanwa, Mina. Good to be back. Glad you're back. Thank you. Um, and Hale and Hardy. And Steve? I'm here. Didn't get sick. Glad you're back, John. Thank you. Indeed. Glad you're yes. feeling better. Um, very glad you could be here because we're going to start our dig tonight by digging back into 8th MS team. Yes. So, yes, today we're going to be talking about episodes 4 through 6 of Mobile Suit Gundam, the 8th MS team. Last week, we looked at the um, uh, first few episodes, which are kind of introduction, kind of, kind of getting getting everyone together, um, you know, kind of figuring all that stuff out. And now we've got something a little more, uh, you know, a little heavier going on here as we get into 8th MS team and episode four, The Demon Overhead. Dun, dun, dun. Indeed. So this episode begins with um, a bit more about uh, Zeon, actually, mm -hmm. and dealing yeah. more with some of the, the background of the various characters and the hotshot pilot character, gotta have him, acquired by law, <laughs> acquired by Slegger Law. I'm sorry, I apologize for that pun. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Um, um, we get a little bit more with uh, with our various characters, kind of the issues that they're dealing with um, uh, between brother and sister. Um, what were your thoughts on kind of the the revealing of kind of the relationship between these two? You know, it's, it's a little contentious with, with fans. It's kind of you know having this kind of brother sister relationship, and would a sister kind of do this for a brother and this kind of thing? All kinds of that. As this was unfolding, kind of, what, what did you guys think of this? I thought Brocon the whole way, <laughs> <laughs> and on 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 her brother's part, Siscon completely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I I it left me kind of wondering whether I, again not having you know a deeper understanding of the of the political mm -hmm. universe of Gundam, whether there was something here about you know factions and Zeon yeah. and what's happening and like I it didn't sort of surprise me. It's like that she's helping her brother out. She's so mm -hmm. devoted to her brother. It's kind of still creepy, whether I'm watching another anime or watching this, but <laughs> you know what I mean, I, I kind of took that as, as a par for the course. And then just trying to figure out like, what am I missing about the political intrigues of Zion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in <laughs> fairness, one of the things that, that does come across a bit more strongly in other um, uh, Gundam series is that Zeon is a very young nation. Yeah. So it's still kind of figuring out its identity, you know, how aggressive should it be, how aggressive shouldn't it be. So you absolutely do get these different people within the different organizations where we should be just, you know, doing this, we should be doing that. And like there's no consistency mm -hmm. really across a lot of things. So the the you know, when when you first see this, one of the first things that you you think about though is, well, you're on the front lines. Why do we have this ballroom inside the side of the mountain? <laughs> so, but when you stop it, it kind of makes sense a little bit because these people live on sides, and this is kind of yeah. what they're used to in, in kind of enclosed, you know, kind mm -hmm. of things and structures like this. And it is, and to your point, Brent, the the it's not like these families have been around for hundreds of years. You're talking like mm -hmm. maybe three or four generations top. Mm -hmm. And but they've definitely established a sort of <clears throat> hierarchy, which mm -hmm. is um, based on not necessarily nobility, but money and old money mm -hmm. and new money and you know that, that kind of thing that that's going on here. And so a name means a lot of things. So the you know the the brother and sister are able to you know procure um, this program. Um, you know, to make this new tech to finally just end the the freaking war, um, mm -hmm. but it's based on it's based on it's based on you know basically money. You know how do you do it and, and influence mm -hmm. and power. So when you see all these people kind of like all dressed up like this, and yeah. you know you you have this like okay regality and this this attempt at nobility that really doesn't exist. Yeah, 
you know it's kind and, of a nouveau riche or, society yeah exactly yeah, exactly like and the zombie family is actually what you would call old money cuz the mm-hmm. zombies have been it's established that the zombies have been around since the beginning mm-hmm. and the Z- mm-hmm. and so you had these hanger on families that attach their fortunes to various factions within Zion and Zabi family happens to be among the more powerful ones and that mm-hmm. usually has to do with wealth wealth is a big deal in the Gundam universe for the Zion mm-hmm. and that's a, a, a big part of it um but then you start seeing things like loyalty like um if you take back the, the pilot not this guy not the buffoon here um, <laughs> but um like you yeah. know, go back out to outdoors mm-hmm. when the the so yeah him um, I forget his name. This is the guy. This guy is the founder guy. creep. Yeah. <laughs> well, you actually are going to get to like him mm. as the series goes on. He's not quite mm. on the level of Rambo Rao, but yeah. he's he's somebody who's just like, okay, I'm dedicated to this ideal. I'm a soldier, and I understand what she's trying to do, and I'm dedicated to this. Mm-hmm. And so you see more along the lines of this guy's in a total different class than these other people. He is he not a family. Looks like, he looks like Frankenstein. He just <laughs> yeah. does. I mean, he's, he does. he's got a uh-huh. very distinctive uh-huh. look. <laughs> but but he yeah. doesn't have money. His prestige mm-hmm. comes from his his ability in combat. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons why they don't like the big buffoon guy that comes in is because this guy is where he is through privilege. Mm-hmm. He right. has skill, but he's where he's at through privilege where everyone else is kind of having to prove that they need to be there the brother and sister mm-hmm. while they put on airs their family is not as important as the other guy's mm-hmm. family is and yeah. that's why he's able to look down and they all kind of look at him and go god what a bore so mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah exactly um yeah there's a lot of sort of un- uh, unstated politics yeah there's a lot of class structure going on yeah. here yeah mm-hmm. um which is actually quite interesting in a for a society like Japan that is so, um, they call it having the universal middle class, right? They, they, they were really focused in the post-war period by creating this kind of, this broad middle class. Um, just seeing this, this focus in a society on on class, like, you know, um, there's, there's a saying, I think the, the Pythons say, um, actually everything you ever see in the United Kingdom is a, a joke about class. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's, just, it's, it's fundamental to kind of how we see, everything we see is through a lens of class. Um, and it is, it is kind of funny how you do kind of see that a lot in this. And it actually kind of reflects also on what you see in um, with Shiro and the others, uh, where it is very much not that. It is very much equals. Right. You know, Shiro is very much about saying, no, we're all in this together. We're all just kind of soldiers on the front line. I am certainly the leader, you know, and I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, make use of that. But it's a much more flat organization. It's much more egalitarian, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, um, it is, do you think that the, the factionalism of um, Zeon is kind of a, a callback to like the whole Zaibatsu kind of culture? Oh, yeah. Of, yeah, of oh, absolutely. Pre war yeah. and during mm-hmm. war Japan. Yeah. Uh huh. Absolutely. So that kind of yep. monetary and, and who's, who's important and who is. Who's isn't. who. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Because that that kind yeah. of like as you're saying this is like I Absolutely. that kind of rings yeah. through my head to be like okay mm-hmm. yeah it totally fits um, and it kind of uh, also helps to explain some of the, the the plot of this episode because you find out that um, Pretty Boy here is um, is heading up this Xeon research facility and what he's very good at is projecting well in front of other people yeah. And not so much behind the scenes, kind of keeping it all together. And he's he's not obviously falling apart, but you realize it's very stressful for him. And again, getting back into these unstated things is this idea that, you know, he didn't just bankroll this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, his reputation, all of that really relies on this this uh, thing that they're building. And and he ain't well. Nope, he is yeah. not. Um, Although his hair is fantastic. It's perfect. Perfect hair. Absolutely. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, and so the, the main plot of this episode is a, kind of the introduction of the uh, giant mecha uh, yeah. that they are testing uh, with Xeon and how uh, kind of ridiculous it is um, in terms of, <laughs> of, of power and, and such. Well, just visually, 
Mm. I was trying to figure, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this thing flying around. I'm like, wow, holy crap, this thing's <laughs> huge. But you can yeah. still see, like, there's a Zaku. Like, right, there's yeah, a Zaku. Like, head, head, right. Head. I'm like, <laughs> like okay. Uh, interesting. So is this one of these things where it's, you're not, operating in your native environment so you're mm. you're getting parts and pieces and bits and stuff to work with but you you're not you don't have a giant manufacturing facility readily available to just mm. spontaneously create something anew so you're just cobbling some stuff parts together to put the pilot cockpit from a zaku in this stuff and then kind of clap it all together so i think it's partly that i, I think it's, it's also just like we solved the sensor problem with this head configuration so we'll just bolt that on. Like, there's right. no point reinventing the wheel. We'll just reuse right. that piece of tech um, because it works. This is a you proven know? technology that we'll yeah, incorporate. Right. Okay. Exactly. Um, uh, it's also, I I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a wouldn't it be hilarious if moment in the writer's room. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a head, you know, the, the artist was kind of drawing and stuck a Zacho head up on topic. That's hilarious. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> It's a super crazy machine board. and a little skull. Yeah. <laughs> like, a little, little Zaku head and they're just like, oh, I'll never make it. And then they watch it. Oh, my God. Wait. <laughs> how'd that happen? Um, and it should also be pointed out, I mean, on the one hand, this is not a typical, obviously, Xeon uh, design. Yeah. Um, it also does kind of um, um, reflect back on, like, the Xeon uh, and the um, uh, I'm forgetting the name of Lala Soon's ship. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a bad at talking. Oh. Um, but um, a lot of these just more kind of abstract designs for ships, right? Um, and that is kind of interesting because it, it does suggest this, this is unusual, this is a remarkable ship. It's not meant to have all the normal functions, it's kind of stripped down for one thing and one thing only, yeah. Um, so I kind of like the, the visual idea of that. That this is just a, it's a giant sphere that does the thing, yeah. <laughs> basically. Menacingly, well, the, it does. Well, it this menacingly. is yeah. This is supposed to be the 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 weapon that's going to end the war, which mm. you come to find that the brother and the sister don't particularly like. Um, yeah. You know, and, and we'll talk about it, I guess, in coming up in the next couple yeah. episodes. But you know, they're just like, let's just end the freaking thing by making the most monstrous thing that we can. Yeah. that will destroy so much because as they're put as you're watching them put this th not necessarily put together but they're testing it and they're flying it around and stuff like that mm -hmm. you notice that they're not doing anything in space right this yeah. weapon is meant for earth and it's meant to destroy things on the earth mm -hmm. they're they're aiming to just end the war by just wiping out as much as they can yeah and this is you know this is supposed to be the uber weapon it's not like the Gundam, which was a response to the Zaku. You know, the Zaku here, you have this yeah. nimble flying thing, and then we're just like, uh, the Fetties are just like, well, we got to make something to counter that. So right. here's mm -hmm. the Gundam. Yeah. This is something totally different. It doesn't need to be a mecha. It doesn't need to be yeah. anything. It just needs to just kill as much as possible to end the It just the needs to quickly. be a doomsday weapon. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, that literally. Maybe. Yeah. Almost as an atomic bomb. Yes. Sort imagine of. that. I know. Sort of. Mm. Um, so in that, in that picture you have of a blasted hellscape, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just saying, just saying. Um, so yeah, this is really, um, you know, structurally, this is just kind of introduce okay, here's what's actually going on with 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 Xeon. Um, and then of course, the the, the poor HMS team stumbles across this and they're like, oh, but that, but that, but that. What, 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 what do we do? Like, I think we could that, shoot it, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> kill it with fire kill it dead yeah it doesn't work so well um but it also of course introduces for us the star cross lovers idea here um, oh, yeah. we're gonna, oh okay we're gonna have these um our, our two main characters kind of uh focus on that so at the, the romeo and juliet moment mm -hmm. yeah so which we already had when when they were in space anyway true. So. um but kind of more of an establishing structure kind of a thing yeah, um, but I, I do like this episode for the fact that it does kind of set all this stuff up, and it is um, I actually in a weird way like how mundane the episode is in a sense where it's kind of this connective episode of you know more information about these characters, more information about what's going on um, with, uh, with with the stuff they're building, more stuff around um, um, again like sort of Zion politics, 
stuff around what's going on with who the HMS team. Um, the fact that they don't try to make every episode just explosively new and different, um, I think works well for this particular episode. Well, it is nice to have background on, like, you know, where – if you had just had a giant machine show up, <laughs> like, right. it's not nearly as really interesting to ask the questions of, like, okay, well, you know, what's what's the genesis of this machine? Like, yeah. what are they doing? What What's Zeon trying to achieve here? Mm-hmm. Who's behind all this? Why, you know, yeah. why did this suddenly appear out of nowhere and that she's the pilot? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, I like that. Thank you. I like some connective tissue to this because, mm-hmm. uh, again, I don't have the grander universe kind of understanding, yeah. so it helps me to dial into the fact that hey gundam isn't just fight of the week Mm -hmm. you've got other things that are stewing in the pot so here's a here's an episode to appreciate the things that are Mm -hmm. that are stirring like oh gotcha gotcha um speaking of which similar thing for episode five really um which is our episode where uh uh our desertion episode so to speak (laughs) yeah where eldor decides to run off um, and uh, kind of have some fun in nearby village, which is not a good idea. Yeah, that worked out poorly. Yeah, it turns out. Um, so basically, um, Elidor, our, our resident rock musician, um, discovers that his song is going to get played on the radio. Um, and so for reasons, decides to run off um, and uh, kind of celebrate the local town. <laughs> which, of course, but you and Jane are by Zia. So good job there. Um, you, you know, the, the first telltale sign would have been like all the construction crew around this, the, yep. the, the village, you know, but you know, Hey, what, what do I know? But, um, well, also as an active war zone going a wall, uh, yeah, you know, right. If, yeah. If they catch you and they're feeling kind of nice about it, they could just court martial you or they could shoot you. Right. <laughs> like, not a good way to cap your your career getting onto the radio be like yes now this deceased artist new song (laughs) (laughs) nice we will get nothing else out of him yeah Mm -hmm. um but to your point so this does a couple of really useful things one thing it does is set up um kind of what's going on with various characters you get how shiro reacts to this which is well that was bad for them to do but what are we going to do now Right, he, yeah. he, he doesn't freak out. He doesn't start, you know, raging around. He's like, okay, we've got to do X, got to do Y, we've got to do Z. We'll wait for this long, so forth and so on. Um, and I just, I do love that about Shiro that he's this, this um, um, focused individual. He doesn't get caught in the weeds. He, he, yeah, you know, I think, I think the, the actual line I think is, okay, you know what? We're going to worry about that later. Let's yeah. focus on on this. Exactly. You know, it's just kind of like. Believe it or not, that's actually the less important thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got to worry about this whole big thing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, um, you also get a bit more about what's going on with Zeon. Um, I do love the scene where Mother's trying to um, get help for her child, and the Zeon soldiers are harassing her. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, the, the characters are like, you know what? This this sucks. Like this is. This is terrible. Like, you know, it shouldn't happen. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? Right? Yeah, well, he points out. He's just like, well, you know, the enemy is out there. We can't just let them go. You know, mm-hmm. you just, that that's a thing. You know, mm-hmm. you, that's, you know, that's why they have the question. You're driving a truck and there's a cliff side on either side of you and there's a kid in the road. You know, they used to ask this in the army and mm-hmm. go, what do you do? Mm-hmm. The right answer is actually run over the kid. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what you got to do. And so that's what he's kind of pointing out to her. He's just like saying, you know, yeah, this does suck, but you know what? We're in a war. You know, mm-hmm. what, what if they go to, and tell the Fetties that we're here? Then we have to do all these other things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, and so, uh, uh, yeah, we get our, our, our characters. Um, um, that was according to the full convention of the Geneva Convention. Um, everything's fine. Uh, they, they tripped by the stairs, right? Um, uh, and then, of course, our uh, our heroes come in to try to save them. Um, uh, and they, they, they break out through sheer um, beating each other up, basically. Yeah. So Eleanor just has a mental breakdown. He's just yeah. like, oh, my God, I'm not going to... And they start beating up on each other. And the poor guy. I actually sympathize with the guard a little. Yeah, you do. 
you know, he's sitting out there. He's just like, okay, I'm off of this. I'm here in this planet. I'm trying to read this magazine about places to go on this planet, whatever. And and God, these guys, what the, <laughs> they're going to die in the morning. Why are they fighting out? Yeah, shut Come up, on. Andrew, you idiot. Yeah, yeah, he's just like, all I want to do is just sit here and read. And why are you? Okay, fine. <laughs> Don't make me come in there, you two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, did this scene work for you guys? Well, I think if it was shorter, then it would, yeah. But mm -hmm. like the whole, like, you know, with Eleanor cracking up and then, you know, trying and then uh, uh, Mikkel trying to, you know, help him and then they're just erupting into a, a fist fight took way too long. But I think it was, it, it worked for me insofar mm -hmm. in that. You know, by the end of it, the payoff was that you mm -hmm. know both dude gets knocked out, and they're yeah. they're like, "Oh, wait, here we go. We're like <laughs> Abbott and Costello here, you know, yeah, yeah. Mutt and Jeff." Mm -hmm. And um, so the payoff was fine, but I think the lead up was a little little long, mm -hmm. little long. Well, I would like to have seen a, a more serious consideration of the situation, mm -hmm. and that yeah, that I, I I don't have a problem with with how things laid out, but yeah. it would be it, I I didn't write it. I'm not right. <laughs> but I would like to have seen a payoff at the end. Be like, okay, good, that worked. I'd be like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. yeah, you would yeah, right, some exactly. question yeah. of, so yeah. did you plan this? Did you not plan it? Mm -hmm. As opposed to being like, oh, it's just kind of sort of semi goofy stuff going on. You're not really paying much attention to the fact you're about to be executed in the <laughs> morning. Yeah, so, it's a little but, soap opera writing for me. Yeah, so yeah. I, I think there, with with a tweak word or two extra mm -hmm. you could have been like okay this makes absolute sense why they've gone like mm -hmm. you know crazy here it's in the wine cellar but yeah yeah that's exactly it. again i didn't write it <laughs> that's fine you know um here um and then you basically our heroes uh manage to get out not easily yeah um and i do really appreciate this that like they're they're beat up they have to do this and like I don't know get shot. Like <laughs> yeah. like it's 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 not like oh well then we, we run back and yay, hello commander. Yeah. Like it's a really rough experience for them. Well, it gives you a good appreciation for the fact Eleanor has like some particular problem. Shut the hatch. No, I'm not gonna shut the hatch. <laughs> yeah, shut the hatch. Like, mm -hmm. what's wrong that he refuses so vehemently about that? Yeah. Is he claustrophobic? No, because we've seen them in the yeah, yeah, in the hover tank. tank. Yeah, you know, it's like so. I, I I'm curious. Will they address? Mm. You know, why did he do that? Oh, it's hot in there. So what? <laughs> <laughs> I I, th I think what it is Always is that hot. he's actually <laughs> yeah. is that he's not really used to piloting, piloting. any any anything, and mm -hmm. that it, you know, if you're not used to something. What's natural is what you're what you see with your eyes. It's just mm -hmm. like flying a plane for the first time, and they tell you trust your instrumentation, not your yeah. senses. Mm -hmm. And he's trusting his senses and not into the instrumentation. Mm -hmm. Mikhail could probably yeah. get them out pretty easily because that's yeah. what what he's actually trained to do. Yeah, he's got and the training he, for it. For mm -hmm. it, Eleanor does not have the training for it, mm -hmm. and Eleanor does not become focused until he gets hurt. Yeah, and true. pain. And for those of us who used to play sports, we all know that pain is an incredible clarifying event <laughs> you can go oh right yeah i need to do that thing so yeah. eleanor once he gets into pain he sees that you know he gets the shard in his leg which would be, oh. you know you know enough mm -hmm. he also gets hit in the shoulder he's just like okay fine we're getting out of here <laughs> yeah time you to know, go but, yeah Mm -hmm. I just think I, I think it's just a matter that it, that he's not trained to do it, so he mm -hmm. doesn't know how to do it. And he actually mm -hmm. does say, "I'm no good at doing this." True. Yeah. Well, is that an indication of no training, or is that an indication mm -hmm. of I've been trained but I'm not comfortable with it? Because mm -hmm. that that was what I was trying yeah. to figure yeah. out. I'm like, yeah. he he not everybody's have, a pilot, but yeah. I mean, he might have gone through basic on this. He's just not mm -hmm. good at it. Yeah. But we don't have any yeah. background on that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I just was yeah. kind of less scratching my head, be like, I'd rather have the armored door shut. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, even if I don't know what I'm doing and I'm flailing well, around, I kind of I prefer the you know protection. Mm -hmm. If there's one thing I learned about that wartime documentary, Girls in Ponzer, <laughs> it's that you know you just leave the hatch open so you can see better, right? It's just it's better yeah. to be able to you know view things. 
which is a genuine wartime I mean, uh, thing to do. Thing. So I mean, yeah. that's that's makes sense. But hatch, that's also yeah. not a a Gundam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually a good point, John. It's it, uh, John in chat. It's possible to that the Eleanor took um, uh, like the, the equivalent of like flight sim training. Um, so like he knows how to operate the controls, but he's never like been in an actual mobile suit. Right. Right. So he's yeah. like. I know what these buttons do, but I'm totally uncomfortable in this environment. That, that would kind of make sense. Right. Um, but uh, yes, they, they, they do manage to make it out, um, not unscathed. Um, and then you do get, um, um, yeah, I do love this little reunion, um, uh, the very Ghibli style character reunion here between the, the, the two quote unquote old characters. Yeah. Um, it's kind of sweet. Um, and then I love and deeply appreciate the scene with, with Shiro and Macau. Um, when Shiro reprimands uh, Macau and is like, you idiot, don't do that. But I am glad you're back. Yeah. yeah. Like it's punishment, but not rejection, which I just, I thought was just so, so nice. Well, it's also the acknowledgement that you, given the, the circumstances they're in, mm. this is not something where you can march Mikel off. Mm -hmm. you know, but like, that's yeah. it. You're going to the brig. You're going to jail. See if you're done. It's like, no, it was stupid. Yeah. But they don't have a big enough team. They could sacrifice any one of these people. They all mm -hmm. play that critical role. So it's like, you're yeah. bad at doing this. Don't do that again. Glad yeah. you're back. Let's get on with the business. Yeah. And Mikel's 18. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's a little bit of grace there of, Okay, I recognize that you don't have the best judgment right here. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't everybody have great judgment at eighteen? Come on, yeah, of course, yes. <laughs> um, Won't well, even go there. <laughs> um, and again, let's just you know, I, I want to give a moment to the artistry of this, the that, that moment with the, the, the sunrise, um, this, the symbolism of kind of a new day. You know, yeah. Mikhail giving it, getting a new chance, and just the the gorgeous golds and purples of this scene like it looks nice but it also has meaning which is just so cool um yes and he'll, he'll be fine um <laughs> as, as we discover from the the, the boob grab um <laughs> and then off he goes strapped to the back of a jeep which is a great way to transport somebody who has internal injuries um bouncing through the the the, uh, the village it'll be great um <laughs> Well, that's a way to guarantee that all the mixed up parts settle back into their proper role. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just kind of shake it down. You know, yeah, yeah totally, totally. But isn't this where we learn a little bit more about uh, what's her name, Karen? Oh, is this where that happens? Yes, because they they she operates on him. Does oh, that's right, right. And, right. And they're like, mm -hmm. how does she know how to do this? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, her husband was a surgeon. Oh, she's married, and he's dead. Oh, okay. She's mm -hmm. she's a widow. All right, got it. Yeah. But you know, she has you know the certain skills, and you again, this is kind of like one of those throwbacks to Mobile Suit Gundam where they talk about where people talk about like um oh what was uh Amaro's crush? What was her name? Rawa. Is that who it was? And mm -hmm. who who gets killed later on and he actually serves with her fiance? What? Oh what? Okay, so in Mosu <laughs> Gundam, the the, okay. the the officer with the red hair. Oh, um, Matilda. Matilda. Right. Amaro has a crush yeah. on Matilda. Yeah. She's right, engaged right. to get married. You know, yep. the thing happens, mm -hmm. and then later on, he has to serve with right. her. Her, you know, now widower. Yeah. <laughs> widower. Well, and um, so you know, it's kind of like a throwback to that. Just saying, mm -hmm. well, this is war, and you know, he got killed. And, uh, you know, so here's where they're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, wow. Um, and Dan and chat, you're right. I think the boob, the boob grab scene felt superfluous. Um, yeah, we didn't need that. In bad taste, put it that yeah. way. Um, but yes, um, he'll be fine. Apparently. He'll be fine. Um, the, the torture helped to toughen him up before the gunshot. Right, oh, exactly. Good, good, good. That which does not kill you, right? You know, makes you makes you weak. Yes. 
Let me move on to the battle line on the burning sand. One of my favorite episodes. Just visually, um, just the whole element of them out in this desert, having to deal with the situation, having to just wait. Yep. For days and days and days. And the uh, just kind of the, the drabness, the, the use of color here, the fact they kind of leached the color out of everything, because of course everything's covered in sand. Yep. Um, but just how how washed out all the colors are here. Uh, and then the, the revelation that this is the testing facility and you have these gorgeously horrific beam um, hollows in the, the cliff walls. Yeah. Oh. I was trying to figure out, I thought it was like a, like, oh, this is this like metal wall of a buried facility. Mm -hmm. And then like, they're looking nope. at it and like, oh, it's glass. I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh God, huh. damn. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Literally, okay. yeah. high energy <laughs> weapon. Okay, fine. Yeah, <laughs> gotcha. Pretty much. Um, um, also, definitely a little bit of a, of a nausea vibe here. The idea of the you know, high energy beam blasting through, you know, things. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, just kind of have to wait um, with with Kiki. Um, uh, Mikhail almost killed Shiro, which you know. Yeah. Um, this was a little bit of a weird scene uh, here too, I think, because we've all, I think mean, we've all either been around or kind of had that experience as a kid where, you know, you're working with your dad or your uncle or something and you don't realize something and, you know, uh, they put their hand in, in, in the, the wood chipper or something. Yeah. Um, but for a soldier out in the middle of something doing a repair operation, this felt extremely negligent. Yeah. And the fact that everyone just kind of shrugged it off, I found it kind of surprising. Um, obviously, he gets yelled at a little bit, but it seems like, oh, well, you know, should have done that. It's like, eh. he's just sad and distracted. He'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, um, but we do get a little bit more about some more characters' backstories again. Uh, uh, Mikhail and his, uh, his girlfriend? Girlfriend? Question mark. Oh, BB. Yeah. Oh, hard yeah. to say. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I always forget about this little storyline. And I, you know, every time I see this particular part of it, I, I keep thinking that it's the note that just says, yeah, we're done. See ya. Bye. Right. And then, you know, <laughs> and, and, you know, this is the letter that ends everything. It's not, but, you know, it's, it's, you know, that's... and then Mikel steps into the, into the beam cannon. Beam. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, not no. that. No. Um, but I, I do like again, sort of pacing wise, how they structure this. That this is not just a this isn't just resolved immediately. That over the course of the episode, this kind of keeps coming back up, coming back up because it is the kind of thing that you would have in the back of your mind that you wouldn't want to talk to people about that would just kind of be eating away at you, um, and you know isn't relevant to what's actually going on, but is actually really relevant to, to your mental state. Yeah. yeah. Because there's there's no let up on the boredom, but you have to you know yeah. keep doing the thing. You have to keep vigilant, and it's not mm -hmm. easy yeah. to do that when nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. and so your mind is always wandering, and you know it's doing the thing. Now, if you're more experienced, if you're more of a veteran, you know what you have to do to do the things. You mm -hmm. know, there's always something that you know that you can be doing to keep your mind on task. Well, like mm -hmm. maintenance and, like and checking things, supplies, and supplies, you know, and, yeah. You know, you know, and one of the points that they make about that is, um, uh, what's his name, Reaper guy, is mm -hmm. actually creating a, a well, and you yeah. actually see the physics of it, of what he's doing. Yeah. And, you know, he's keeping busy, even though these are like little mm -hmm. weird, at first they're just like little tiny things that he's doing, but you realize that they're actually meaningful things that he's yeah. doing. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting how Kiki is actually kind of watching everything and just kind of yeah. learning and kind of going, okay, got it. So mm -hmm. it, as if to say, okay, this is useful in case I need to do this mm -hmm. in the future. But these are like the little things that, that, you know, people keep themselves engaged with so that, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't go, <laughs> Oh my God! What if, what if? 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 What is she doing now? What is she doing at this right second? What is she watching TV? What is she doing? Blah blah blah. Which my cal is doing, and he's just like, "Yeah, we're going to need water." So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, totally agree. Um, 
Um, and then of course you get the the again, I just make very well done scene where Kiki finds out, you know, finds the letter, um, runs off, reads it, and then uh, you know, laughing the whole way, and then stops laughing. Yeah. At this point, I was like, "How many languages can Kiki read?" Because <laughs> that letter was in French. Was all in French. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Eh, you know. Well, she has um, the auto translator uh, eye implant. Oh, so there we go. Yeah. <laughs> she's seventeen. She's you know experienced a lot of things in her life. Clearly, Google most of them effective. terrible. But <laughs> <laughs> she went to Cuba on a mission trip. She she she's in the, she traveled the world. Um, <laughs> I, I guess. Um, uh, but yeah, again, just a, a a lovely little moment. And again, I like that this comes between um, this comes between two young characters. Um, right. It's not an adult with 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 uh, with Mikael. It's you know, eighteen year old, seventeen year old, just kind of having this moment of like, "What do you do? I don't know. I just don't know." Um, it's a tough moment. Um, and of course, you know, as we realize later, this very much mirrors what's going on with uh, Kiki and Shiro. Um, and again, one of those things that they kind of. Woven in slightly, like you know, it's kind of there a little bit, and then to have it kind of blossom at this point in the OVA and realize, oh no, 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 no. Like, like she really has a thing for him. Yeah. Um, well, she's the only one of of the group of people who's mm -hmm. actually out there with them in the desert, sitting day by day. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. okay, she's got a commitment to this that the other freedom fighters don't have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um. And again, just the, the lovely kind of imagery here that the shot here I have of Kiki just alone. Um, you know, the use of um, the off camera, right? Where Because she is feeling um, off with herself. The camera isn't centered. So she's off center, literally. Um, just love kind of the, the visuals here. Um, I can't go into that. Um, just again, just lots of nice little little touches here. Um, here. Uh, and then, of course, the time comes. Um, also, it should be pointed out, um, we had this a little bit earlier, which kind of I, I like quite a bit. Um, was it here? Up here? When they're dealing? Yeah. Um, the drone? Yeah. Unmanned drones? Yep. <laughs> you know, in an OVA that came out in the 90s, that's pretty cool. They're thinking that far ahead to that kind of thing. It's like, wow, well, well done, Gundam. <laughs> um, um, but yes, you know, um, eventually they're able to kind of um, to confront the enemy. Um, and of course, it doesn't go exactly particularly well. They yeah. do their best. <laughs> <laughs> As is kind of the the, the thing, um, um, but we now have the actual connection. So here's where, um, and so again, one of the one of the things that they they have in in uh, in Gundam is the idea that if, uh, sound doesn't travel through space, but if two mobile suits you know stack up next to each other, then the sound can resonate through the the shells, and so you actually hear somebody else. Um, and so they kind of reference that here. When Shiro actually gets on top of the, the mobile suit and actually speaks, that resonance and that, that those frequencies can actually work so that they actually hear each other. Um, and so here's where they find out <laughs> the thing. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's you. Mm -hmm. um, sorry for being stabby. Uh, <laughs> exactly. I'm going to attempt to kill you at this moment, but <laughs> nothing against you. Look, you. You, you look great. You look great in that jumpsuit, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, got to kill you. And again, I, just, I appreciate the storytelling here where you would expect this to, to wait until episode 10. You know, and for right. him to not realize that until the climax. But no, like yeah. they realize that early on. Like we're we're on opposite sides of this war and not just like I'm here and you're over there. Like we are literally facing each other in this one conflict. Yeah. That sucks. Well, the power of love and friendship should win in the end. So that'll, exactly. it'll all be good. She right? just wants her watch back. Yeah. Pretty much. That's, that's all. 
Um, I wouldn't even have been here if I could tell what time it was. <laughs> oh. Fair enough. Fair enough. What are you supposed to be in today? Um, um, also, you just love the the animation and editing of this sequence, just kind of the freneticism of it, where all the things going on, different people trying to, to, to do stuff, just this, despite all the waiting, it's still this chaotic thing, yeah. where just nothing quite goes right. Um, and it feels that way. It, it feels very, very weird because of the fast cutting. Um, and then just the, whenever you're doing this kind of thing, and one of the reasons I want to call it out is because um, when you're cutting rapidly between different things, the animation has to work. Otherwise, you can't tell what's going on. So the fact the sequence works means that, like, the visuals are very clear and crisp. And we can tell, oh, that's that, that's that, that. You know, you're not getting wobbly, weird animation where something that doesn't look like Gundam anymore. So, you know, applause for that. Um, and off they go. Um, off Bina goes, I should say. Um, as we're left with this wonderfully kind of odd ending for episode six. Like, nothing's resolved. Nothing is better. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly not better. <laughs> and we're just, that's it's kind of where we are right now. Uh, well, it's not know. super worse, you know. No. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I mean, that's sort of the vicissitudes of war. It's like yeah. some days are nothing, some days are absolute horror, other mm -hmm. days are good. Mm -hmm. You know. Yep, absolutely. Um, and that's where we stop at this point, halfway through. Gonna make them listen. What are you guys' thoughts at this point? I'm um, looking forward to, to to seeing how this goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where do you think it's going to go? I think you're going to have some very, uh, very difficult choices that mm -hmm. our 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 two uh, our two love crossed pilots are going to have to make about mm -hmm. where do they fall? Do they do their duty, which mm -hmm. is therefore to keep fighting, yeah. or do they make a third choice? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I don't know how they could. <laughs> you know I mean? they're, they're both in their respective militaries, so they can't just be like, let's elope. Be like, no, <laughs> no it's not a thing. Yeah. You're going to both yeah. end up shot. <laughs> yeah. Either either by the Fetties or by Zeon. One mm -hmm. or the other is going to shoot you. So I, I, I will be very curious to see um, mm. how I, it's going to go, how you can have Starcrossed mm. and not have one of them die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they it easily could be. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Plenty of one, people can get killed these things. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things that makes this particular, and I'm trying to like dance around the, the yeah. spoilers, um, because <laughs> it, 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 John, you have no idea how much I want to scream what's going to happen. <laughs> um, it, it's, it, you're, you're going to go seriously. Mm -hmm. And, um, no, because it's, 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 watch it's, get it's there. um, because it's different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what, what happens is different. And mm -hmm. like it's totally different from what happens in other Gundam episodes. Mm -hmm. Um the Zentradi but... show up and unite humanity and Zeon <laughs> all together to fight the invading space aliens. And then Idiot would... just wipes the slate clean. Um exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and naked space babies. Damn it. <laughs> um one of but, the but I just have to say, just for the, those who know, there's actually an Idion meme in like Japanese um, social media where folks will do like you know some mecha or some science fiction show, somebody does an ultimate you know thing, whatever, and it just cuts to the Idion going, <laughs> and just wiping it all clean. <laughs> <laughs> and so, they're antsy. Oh. <laughs> so one of the things that that you appreciate with this with this particular mm -hmm. anime is the, how. <clears throat> they really do want to talk about the day-to-day -day life of an mm -hmm. average soldier. This is, you know, again, we've talked about before how this is not Amaro Ray piloting the original Gundam, and he's a wonder wonder kid who's, you know, can can do no wrong, or not can do no wrong, but can't <laughs> be beaten or whatever. Yeah, right. And these are actual soldiers. I mean, the whole point of this is showing a unit in action, and it's not even it's not even a particularly like special units at, at, no yeah. either it this is this is grunt this is grunt work mm -hmm. yeah these are and, the elite of uh, the elite right exactly this you know it's not thunderbolt um mm -hmm. you know yeah. well, you except for, well snuff, would you consider thunders. the zeon side with the giant flying <laughs> boat would well, you consider that well, to be kind of elitish 
Yeah, well, yeah, I mean that, but I mean yeah. the, for the, for yeah. what we're watching with the Fetty mm -hmm. side. Yeah, Fetty and, side is complete you know, grunt work. And yeah. and one of the things that you know, again, you know, Sanders, that's his name. It yeah. you know makes the little well makeshift well to get mm -hmm. the water, you know. And then you watch Kiki washing the 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 dishes with yeah. sand, and you and when for those of you who do, um, who who have been in the military or do reenactments or do what or you know no military history, know that that's actually a legit way to clean your yeah. your mess yeah. kit. Mm -hmm. You know that that actually works. You know, so to have somebody, there was somebody there on staff who was who either did a really good research job or they kind of, <laughs> you know, saw, you know, were, were there or, or had some type of experience with this. And it's just kind of neat to have a series that shows you a little bit of, you know, but again, you know, this is showing you how like, OK, it's mundane. You, these are the things yeah. you have to do while you're waiting for death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that's 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 what they're doing. And. You know, it's just a nice, nice series in the, in that fashion. Everything seems really grounded. And then, you know, then you have, of course, the, the Xeon side of it where they're trying to make the, the weapon that's going to supposed to be end of the war, which I do think makes it into the Mobile Suit Gundam original some way. I, I don't I feel like it does. I'm not sure about that. That, but, that um, flying boat thing makes yeah. it. Yeah. I, it somehow, I, but it's just, it's one of those things where it's just like, oh, here's the wonderful weapon that we're going to win the war, but we have no way of mass producing it. So here's the one thing that gets destroyed. Like we make two or three of them and that's it. Um, But, you know, for that side, but then on that side, you're, you're looking at more of the long structures of the limitations of Xeon that they put on themselves with this class structure and trying to get mm. things done. You know, here's a guy who's trying to make a weapon that's going to end the war. And you got another guy who's just like coming in. He's just like going, ah, eh, here's the privileged son. Just yeah. let me know when the thing is done and I'll fly or whatever. Don't care. Don't, mm -hmm. give, don't give a rat's ass. But, you know, it's just it's just a very more, it's much more grounded. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, the other Gundam series, War is Hell, this is, well, this is war. Yeah. You know, this is right. this is the day-to-day -day thing. This is what we deal with. Mm -hmm. And then, and I so want to talk about next oh my god look at that i i wanted i can't wait for your reactions Resist john, urge. <laughs> john i cannot wait i cannot wait what percentage of the named characters that we follow do you think will survive like given and it's not your question given the feel so far like where do you think they're aiming well i think eleanor probably survives because he's already been shipped back to get healed up so there's a chance that he might be out of the fray but they're a man down so there's a solid chance that miguel in the in the hover tank that'll get destroyed um and he'll die and or and or like he'll step in the way of a beam cannon because you know he did not uh his uh, baby will send him a terrible <laughs> message um God, Reaper will sacrifice himself in a noble mm -hmm. way where he dies. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen will get will get killed as she's getting ready to go on leave to visit Eleanor. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see. So I think pretty much everybody's hero. Okay. Right. <laughs> what about the Zeon side? Um, definitely pilot pilot girl's gonna die. So that, that, that's, that's that's what I wanted to know. Like like you know. In, in these series, which often have a very, like, strong moralistic bent of, like, you, know, you do bad things, you die, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I mentioned that you, you feel like she's definitely, you know, on that, that side of things. Yeah, I mean, I think she's, she's the most thoughtful to the things that are going on mm -hmm. in this war, and that, you know, her brother has a very clear agenda to make the, make the mm -hmm. killing machine, mm -hmm. and, you know jerkwad guy he's mm -hmm. all about like getting the pilot and be the biggest thing on, on the planet mm -hmm. so if they died that wouldn't have sort of the same kind of impact as if her as a frontline soldier is like this mm -hmm. is just kind of ridiculous i'm doing mm -hmm. the thing for the loyalty to my brother and the and the you know to, to get the get the weapon that will stop mm -hmm. the war mm -hmm. but i don't really want this war i've you know met mm -hmm. this nice fetty he's Good guy, <laughs> seems kind of cool. He's got my watch. I got to make sure I get my watch back. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like so. It would be more impactful to have her die or Shira mm -hmm. die. E either or. Mm -hmm. I mean, those four right. those two. But I, I think mm -hmm. it would be more meaningful if he mm -hmm. survived, okay. and that's it. His entire team's yeah. pretty much out of commission, and he's the only like, oh my god, what happened? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> I hope that doesn't happen. I 
hope they get all rotated back to like Hawaii and they just hang out. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, we will find out. Yes. Um, and we will come back next week with the next three episodes of Wizard Gundam. Uh, and I might be thing. crying. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> you know, they may all be dead within episode seven. We'll, we'll oh, see. boy. <laughs> and then it starts over with a new MSO. Yeah, <laughs> oh, my God. Jeez. Um, they found Sanders' diary. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, he makes Colonel at some point. <laughs> that guy, uh, Space 1999, where they would come off a character every three episodes, four episodes. Ah. Yeah. They, yeah. they, they killed off yeah. a lot of kids. And that was very much kind of the point is that no, nobody's safe. Like it's it's war, and they would just throw mm-hmm. off like name characters and be done. Oh, oh that's yeah. oh gosh. <laughs> I mean, we, I've said it so many times. Once mommy died, mm. no spoilers. So I'm not going to say what show it was, yeah. but once uh-huh. mommy died, I stopped watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, nope. I mm-hmm. love this character. Nope, not doing it anymore. <laughs> Thank <Yep>. you. <laughs> I hear that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, that will do it. We're going to take a quick break for just a few minutes, and we'll be right back to talk about more modern anime and the latest anime news. Let me see if I can pull up the trivia. There it is. Ooh. And um, um, we'll be back in just a few minutes.